the galactic empire's demand arrived without warning, cutting through Earth's satellite networks and projecting a message in every language known to humanity. The empire's ultimatum was as cold as it was absolute. Earth was required to pay tribute, a token of submission, to recognize its place beneath the empire's rule. The message left no room for interpretation. Failure to comply meant destruction, not just of cities or armies, but of the entire planet. This was the Empire's standard procedure, a call to surrender dressed as diplomacy, and it had broken countless worlds before. At first, humanity reacted with shock. Earth was no stranger to power struggles or territorial conflicts, but this was unlike anything they'd faced before. The Empire's technology dwarfed humanity's achievements, and their reach extended into realms that human eyes had only glimpsed through telescopes. Humanity's leaders convened in emergency sessions, acknowledging that this demand was no bluff. The Empire's terms were simple but brutal, submit or be obliterated. There were no allies to turn to, no interstellar defenses prepared for an invasion of this magnitude. As the initial panic subsided, humanity's leaders began to debate options. There were voices that argued for caution, suggesting appeasement or negotiation. Perhaps, some argued, humanity could bide its time, meet the tribute demand, and quietly build its defenses for a future resistance. But this argument quickly dissolved under the weight of reality. The Empire's tribute was never a one-time payment. It was an unending drain, a commitment that would bleed Earth dry over generations, extracting resources and talent until nothing was left. The tribute wasn't merely a demand for goods. It was a symbolic shackle, a means of ensuring Earth's submission would be complete and irreversible. As the gravity of the situation became clearer, a new sentiment began to stir among Earth's leaders. Submission was not an option. Humanity's history was a testament to survival against overwhelming odds, to resilience in the face of powerful adversaries. Earth had endured wars, revolutions, and centuries of struggle. But with each conflict, humanity had grown stronger, more unified, and more determined. To bow now, to offer up their world as tribute, would mean abandoning everything they had fought for. In a secure chamber, top military advisors, scientists, and strategists gathered to chart a course forward. They acknowledged that Earth's technology couldn't rival the Empire's. There would be no traditional victory if it came to war. But as the discussions continued, a different idea began to take shape, one that would exploit humanity's unique strengths. Unlike the Empire's vast fleets and advanced technology, humanity's resources were limited, but they possessed a weapon that the Empire would never expect. Earth's nuclear arsenal, though primitive by galactic standards, was devastating in its power and deadly in its precision. It was then that a grim proposal was put forward, instead of tribute— Earth would send a message that could not be ignored. A small, nimble fleet would be deployed, carrying nuclear payloads modified for space combat. These weapons would be directed not at the Empire's core planets, but at their closest outposts, a remote, lightly defended station that served as an early warning for new worlds like Earth. The objective was simple, to deliver a warning as powerful as any tribute. Earth's leaders debated the potential consequences knowing that a single misstep could provoke annihilation. But there was no alternative that preserved humanity's dignity, its autonomy, or its hope for a future unshackled by submission. Preparations began immediately, with a new urgency igniting the minds of scientists and engineers. The nuclear warheads were modified for maximum yield in space, their guidance systems recalibrated for long-distance targets. Engineers worked tirelessly, ensuring every detail was flawless, knowing the slightest miscalculation could doom them all. They were preparing for the unimaginable, a strike against a galactic superpower, an audacious gambit to show the Empire that Earth would not be intimidated, no matter the cost. As the final stages of preparation unfolded, Earth's leaders crafted the transmission that would accompany their tribute. It was brief, unadorned, a message stripped of all pretense. They acknowledged the Empire's demand but informed them that Earth's tribute would arrive in a form fitting their refusal to kneel. They left it clear that humanity would defend its sovereignty, no matter the consequences. And with that, the operation was set. Humanity's leaders knew the risks, knew the gravity of what they had chosen to do. 
but they also knew that submission was a fate worse than extinction, a surrender of their very identity. The countdown began, and as the fleet departed, there was no turning back. Humanity had made its choice, a choice that would either seal its fate or forever alter its place in the galaxy. As the fleet carrying Earth's tribute moved into position, humanity's leaders waited, every second charged with the weight of their choice. They knew the odds, they weren't naive. They understood that Earth's nuclear arsenal, while devastating, was nothing compared to the Empire's technology. Yet, there was power in the unexpected, in striking with everything they had, in forcing the Empire to confront humanity's defiance firsthand. This wasn't an attempt to win a war but to send an unmistakable message. Earth would not be tamed or subjugated, no matter the cost. For weeks, engineers and scientists had labored, refining guidance systems, calculating trajectories, and ensuring the nuclear payloads would reach their target. The Empire's outpost was well within reach, an isolated station designed to monitor Earth's sector for signs of disobedience. Destroying it wouldn't cripple the Empire, but it would send a signal that Earth had the means, and the will, to strike back. The mission was not about conquest, it was a calculated act of rebellion. Before launch, Earth's leaders prepared a final, encrypted message to the Empire's central command. They kept it as simple as possible, a stark declaration of Earth's refusal to pay tribute. No groveling, no threats, just an acknowledgement of the Empire's demand and a blunt refusal. They left out the specifics, letting the actions of the fleet speak for itself. In place of resources, Earth's tribute would be one of fire and defiance. When the modified missiles were launched, they moved silently through the black void, their deadly cargo shielded by electromagnetic cloaks designed to evade detection. As they neared their target, the fleet altered its course, positioning itself for maximum impact. Humanity held its breath, knowing that the success or failure of this mission would determine their fate. They had committed to an act of defiance so bold, so reckless, that it left no room for retreat. In the moments before impact, Earth's message reached the Empire's outpost, a warning that tribute would arrive but not as they had demanded. The station's crew barely had time to react before the first explosion lit up the void. The nuclear warheads detonated in a blinding display, vaporizing the station in an instant and sending shockwaves that could be felt throughout the surrounding space. The destruction was swift, a brutal reminder that even the smallest spark could ignite a blaze. Earth's leaders received confirmation of the strike and felt a grim satisfaction. Against all odds, they had delivered their message. The Empire would now know that humanity was not like the others. They would not be cowed or easily broken. But with that satisfaction came an understanding of the peril they just invited. The Empire's response would be swift, merciless, and likely devastating. Back on Earth, preparations intensified. They fortified their defenses, preparing for retaliation. Military advisors worked around the clock coordinating with scientists and engineers to devise new countermeasures, even knowing that their technology lagged far behind. Civilians were briefed on emergency protocols, instructed on evacuation plans in case of an invasion. The world held its breath, bracing for the inevitable storm. But amidst the tension, there was a sense of pride, a powerful unity that transcended borders and rivalries. For once, humanity stood as one, united in its refusal to yield. Across cities and nations, people understood the gravity of their defiance. They'd chosen dignity over submission, autonomy over survival, and that choice gave them strength, however fleeting it might be. As days turned to weeks, they waited. Surveillance systems were on high alert, scanning the skies for any sign of the Empire's retaliation. News of Earth's acts spread through underground channels and rogue signals hinting that humanity's defiance had not gone unnoticed by others in the galaxy. Minor civilizations, long bound by the Empire's iron grip, began to murmur of Earth's bravery. Humanity's name was whispered with a strange mixture of awe and disbelief. When the Empire finally responded, it was not with a fleet of warships, as Earth had expected. Instead, a single, terse message arrived from the Empire's central command. There was no praise— no acknowledgement of Earth's resistance, only a warning. 
The Empire stated that it had taken note of humanity's actions and would refrain from immediate annihilation. But the message was clear, any further defiance would bring swift and total destruction. The response was as cold as it was calculated. The Empire's reluctance to retaliate immediately was not a concession, it was a warning. They were watching, waiting, assessing whether Earth's defiance was a singular spark or the start of something more dangerous. They wanted to see if humanity would cower in fear or continue to push boundaries. Earth's leaders understood the subtle message embedded in the warning. The Empire was sizing them up, evaluating the threat they posed. And so, humanity found itself in a tense standoff, aware that the Empire's patience would not last. They had sent their tribute in the form of destruction, but now the burden of survival fell on Earth's ability to continue resisting without provoking a catastrophic end. The Empire's response had tempered humanity's pride with a sobering reality. They had declared themselves willing to face annihilation, and that choice had ignited a spark in the galaxy. But how long that spark would burn remained to be seen. The Empire's outpost lay in ruins, its remains drifting in the cold emptiness of space. The destruction was complete, unexpected, and profound. The news traveled quickly back to the Empire's core systems, where the Galactic Council gathered to review this affront. For the Council, the reality was shocking. No species had dared to respond with outright violence in the face of their demands. They had expected fear, perhaps a plea for mercy or, at most, a silent compliance. Instead, humanity had sent their response wrapped in nuclear fire. Seated in their vast, shadowed hall, the council members were a mix of reactions, rage, disbelief, and for a few, a strange admiration for humanity's audacity. They were a young, technologically limited species, but one with the boldness to deliver a violent tribute as a declaration of independence. And this raised a troubling question among the council. Was humanity reckless or dangerously bold? The council leader, a figure known for his measured responses and strategic mind, broke the silence. Humanity, he began, slowly and with gravitas, is unpredictable, perhaps more than we anticipated. His voice, normally a calm reminder of authority, held a thin edge of anger. Some argued for an immediate, overpowering strike to wipe Earth from existence, to extinguish the spark of rebellion before it inspired others. They were adamant, almost desperate, for a quick resolution. To them, Earth's defiance was an infection that had to be cauterized before it spread. But others, including the more cautious voices, urged restraint. Humanity's response was unlike any they'd encountered, and the Council was not so arrogant as to ignore the potential implications. What if this act of defiance was a sign of deeper resolve, a signal that humanity's survival instinct would make them formidable in a prolonged conflict? The Council's analysts, who had studied humanity's history, warned that Earth's inhabitants had a propensity for fierce resilience, a cultural trait forged through centuries of conflict and adaptation. As the Council deliberated, they considered the possibility that humanity's defiance might inspire unrest among other subdued civilizations. This was a troubling thought. The Empire thrived on control and submission, but if news spread that even a fledgling species like humanity could challenge them, it could incite rebellion across the galaxy. Some of the Council's younger members, who had long questioned the Empire's methods, raised concerns about the risks of heavy-handed retaliation. If we attack, one voiced, we risk proving that defiance is met only with destruction, validating the fear of every oppressed race. But if we wait, if we observe, perhaps humanity will falter on its own. The council leader, thoughtful as always, recognized the truth in this caution. Humanity was new to the galactic arena, untested and unpredictable. Perhaps it would be wise to see how they managed in the days to come left under the weight of their own defiance. For now, the council would let them simmer in the consequences of their choice. This decision to wait wasn't an act of mercy, but of strategy. They would observe, study humanity's response to the standoff, and evaluate the best course forward. In the end, the council's official response was simple, a single message acknowledging Earth's tribute, while making it clear that any further defiance would be met with absolute destruction. This was not an idle threat. The Empire had the capability to level entire worlds, 
and the council's warning was an explicit promise of their strength. Yet, by withholding immediate action, they left earth in a state of uncertainty, a suspenseful silence that would test humanity's resolve. Humanity's response had left an imprint in the council's records, an unprecedented case of defiance that rattled even the oldest, most powerful members. Earth's leaders had sent a message wrapped in destruction, and in return, they had received a warning, one that left them in a quiet, uneasy standoff. As the Council's message reached Earth, humanity understood the razor's edge they now walked. The Empire's response wasn't the retaliation they had feared, but it wasn't peace either. It was a reminder of the Empire's vast strength, tempered with a quiet threat that left Earth standing at the precipice of annihilation. But the people of Earth, rather than shrinking back, felt an even stronger resolve. They had struck a blow, however small, against the most powerful force in the galaxy. And in that moment of risk and unity, they glimpsed a new path, a future where Earth wouldn't just survive but would stand independently, unfettered. Humanity's leaders wasted no time. If they were to preserve their world, they needed more than resolve, they needed preparation. Scientists, engineers, strategists, and leaders doubled their efforts. The world's best minds worked around the clock coordinating resources and pooling knowledge as Earth began an unprecedented acceleration of its defense systems. They started work on enhancing their technology, reverse-engineering everything they had gathered from the Empire's intercepted signals and analyzing every scrap of intel they could get their hands on. From particle shields to energy weapons, Earth was turning itself into a fortress, bracing for any hint of a follow-up strike. But the standoff with the Empire reached farther than Earth's skies. The news of humanity's audacious act had traveled, carried across the galactic channels, reaching distant planets under the Empire's control. To the oppressed civilizations that had long suffered under the Empire's shadow, Earth's defiance was nothing short of revolutionary. For the first time, a species had not only refused tribute but responded with force, and the Empire's lack of immediate retaliation spoke louder than any words. Across the galaxy, Whispers of rebellion began to rise, carried on the winds of hope that Earth's boldness had stirred. Minor factions, who'd been watching humanity's progress with curiosity, took heart in their stand. Humanity had become a symbol, an anomaly that defied the unbreakable rule of submission. Stories of Earth's refusal were passed between traitors, scientists, and freedom seekers across star systems. They spoke of Earth with a kind of reverence a fierce little world that dared to challenge the ancient power of the empire. And as Earth strengthened its defenses, other species began reaching out quietly, inspired by this new vision of a galaxy where not all were subjects of the empire. Meanwhile, Earth remained vigilant, aware that the empire's silence was likely a calculated move, a pause rather than acceptance. Humanity's leaders knew that a follow-up assault could arrive any day, but they were no longer bound by the weight of fear. They had chosen their path, and each new technological advancement felt like a step forward in a long journey toward freedom. On the ground, life adjusted, every citizen understanding the part they played in keeping Earth fortified. Knowledge and skills were shared freely, creating an era of cooperation and focus unseen in Earth's history. As the years passed, Earth evolved from a defiant outpost to a well-defended, unified world, watching the stars not with dread but with a sense of determination. They knew the Empire's silence didn't mean surrender. It was simply another move in a game of cosmic chess. Earth's leaders suspected that the Empire would be observing, waiting for humanity to falter or to grow careless. But humanity's resolve had only strengthened, each day without attack giving them more time to develop, more allies in the shadows of the Empire's reach, and a reputation that spread like wildfire. Eventually, the Empire's council gathered once more, reviewing the repercussions of Earth's defiance. Their analysts reported that the minor uprisings across various systems were fueled, at least in part, by rumors of Earth's independence. The once mighty image of the Empire was changing, chipped away not by weapons but by an idea. Earth's choice had set off a wave of quiet resistance, a willingness among many to believe that defiance was possible. For the Empire, this was a dangerous precedent but to crush Earth now would not erase the message that had already spread. So, the Empire held back, calculating the balance of power anew. And Earth, 
aware of the uneasy peace it had achieved, continued to look upward, knowing that their stand had changed the course of their future. They weren't conquerors, nor were they conquerable. They had become something entirely new in the galaxy, a world that would rather face extinction than surrender its freedom. Earth's tribute had not been one of submission, but of defiance, and it had reshaped the galaxy in ways that neither humanity nor the Empire had foreseen.